Thanks for listening in to part two of our oscillator series as we discuss advantages that you need to know. You know, David, after looking at our website and looking through our data sheets, I notice we seem to boast a lot about our power supply noise rejection. Why is this feature important to customers? Okay, uh, so customers generally have uh, rather electrically noisy boy boards. There's lots of high frequency clocks running on dense, uh, dense PCB boards, uh, traces close to one another, and uh, they frequently use switch mode power supplies. If, these, if the power supply noise is not adequately filtered out on the board or on the oscillator, it shows up as increased jitter on the output. Uh, many cheaper oscillators and clock generators uh, don't have sufficient power supply noise filtering on their chips. And all it takes is just a small amount of power supply ripple and the jitter can easily be 10 times higher than advertised on a data sheet that only shows ideal conditions. We've heard many incidents from customers where they went with a part that was slightly cheaper and on paper it looked fine, uh, only to find out after they got their boards back that their design didn't work at all because of the higher jitter due to this power supply noise. All of our oscillators and clock generators have extensive on-chip power supply filtering to make sure that the jitter stays very low in real-world conditions, which gives the designers more margin and more peace of mind when using Silicon Labs for timing. Okay. Um, what tools can we provide our customers so that they can easily evaluate our various oscillator solutions? Okay, another good question. So we really try to make timing easy. Uh, so we've we've done some things for oscillators to help uh, make this easy for customers to evaluate our parts. So we have a brand new universal eval board. Uh, this one board can test any of our oscillators, uh, XOs or VCXOs, I squared C part, single, dual, quad devices. Uh, it has um, three different package size footprints on it. So again, uh, even our smallest, our, our newest smallest parts uh, can be evaluated as one board. Previously, we had a variety of different boards, and it's kind of a mishmash. Uh, our new universal eval board makes that very easy to just have one board. The board also comes with a software uh, that can be used to program the uh, I2C programmable part, so you can program it through your desktop uh, to get the output that you need. And that software also has nice uh, example code that, uh, that customers can use directly to help them in their own firmware programming uh, for their MCU to drive the I2C programmable devices. <clears throat> we also have a, uh, a really cool tool. It's our oscillator phase noise lookup tool. Uh, there's literally thousands of phase noise plots in this tool. It's for free, it's on our website, and it, it contains the phase noise plots that we captured off of our own Agilent 5052 analyzer. And it's as if you're sitting there in the lab, you can check out a specific product family that you're interested in, a device, a different frequency, your specific output format, and it shows you the exact same phase noise plot that we captured on our device. This is a really useful, no one else, uh, I haven't seen any other uh, oscillator vendors have this. We get a lot of requests for customers wanting to know what is their phase noise plot gonna look like for their particular uh, device. This makes it very easy for them to do that. And it, it, because it's web-based, you can even check this out on your phone. So customers can look at it on, your, on the phone. If you happen to be in a meeting and a customer needs the information, you could even pull it up on your phone right there and show it to them. So again, uh, uh, some, some nice little tools to help out. That does sound useful, being able to go through those different thousands of combinations for the oscillators. As a refresher, what are the key metrics that we should highlight when showing this plot to customers, either on their computer or like you mentioned, the the tablet or phone? Okay, that's a good question. And sometimes it just depends on, you know, the, the sophistication of the customer. But, but typically, you know, what they're looking for in these plots uh, is that they want to see a nice, clean plot with, with very few, if any, spurs. Generally, what they're looking to see is if the measured line, the yellow line on our plots, is, is it less than their design's specified acceptable jitter measurements? measured in uh, DBC for Hertz, uh, at set points. Uh, really what they're doing is they're comparing the line against what's called a phase noise mask requirement for their design. And the common set frequencies that they're comparing it against are shown in the upper right of those plots. These are values at 100 Hertz, 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. <clears throat> and 
the yellow vertical bars in the plot show the frequency range that the jitter number is integrated over. This is usually stand. It's a, there's a standard that the integration band is usually set over from 12 kilohertz to 20 megahertz. So they want to see that the jitter number is over the integration band that they're interested in. The RMS integrated jitter number uh, is shown in the second to last line of text in that plot. The measured frequency is at the top right. Uh, but in general, so those are just the details of a phase noise plot, and they're going to be looking at all of those. But in general, our parts have very low jitter and few, if any, spurs. And so that's what is advantageous uh, for, for our devices. Uh, and then another thing to highlight to them is, you know, if they had a question uh, from some other plot or, or if they if, if it turned out that they couldn't get the exact frequency that they needed, uh, and if it, w if it didn't happen to be in the phase noise lookup tool, we're happy to collect a phase noise plot for them uh, as well uh, to uh, for their needs. Excellent. That sounds like a very convenient tool to have out in the field. With those newer package size additions, it seems like they reduce a lot of the board space and our timing solutions. Uh, what sort of markets and applications might be giving us a second look? So, so there's a handful that that are really interested in it in particular. Uh, but I, but before I get into those, I'll say that pretty much everything that we already are selling into is going to smaller sizes. Telecom, even the existing telecom boards, generally five by seven larger packages was the industry standard for a long time. But everything is getting smaller, uh, lower power consumption, more dense, and and we heard we've heard from many of the traditional customers you know, big iron telco guys that they're all uh, transitioning to 3.2 by 5 as standard sizes and smaller. Um, and, you know, but more specifically, uh, uh, optical module uh, vendors. So these are, you know, pluggable optical modules have a very set form factor. And again, these are getting very, very dense so that you can pack a, a whole lot more of these into a, a data center, for example. <clears throat> um, and so the size requirements for those are very strict. And some of our newest package sizes, 3.2 by 5 and 2.5 by 3.2, uh, will help enable uh, those uh, opportunities. Consumer applications in general continue to get smaller and smaller. Um, and so we've had a lot of interest for consumer parts for our new 2.5 by 3.2 devices. Uh, and in general, you know, boards for servers, acceleration cards uh, in the data center space, uh, those are also, everyone is concerned about, you know, footprint data, overall data center footprint, and that just, helps continue to drive uh, boards smaller and smaller. So in, in general, the, the new package sizes that we have, I think are, um, uh, th th there is a, it's a help in some specific markets, but even in general, uh, it, it will help open up more opportunities for us. Great. Well, David, I think that's all the time we have today, but I want to thank you for taking the time to answer all of these questions. I think it's very helpful for the field. Uh, sure. Thanks for having me, Isaac.